The zebra mussel invasion of North America most likely began when an intercontinental freighter dumped its mussel-infested ballast water into Lake St. Clair, near Detroit, Michigan, sometime around 1986. Adult mussels were first discovered in Lake St. Clair in the summer of 1988. Since that time, they have spread throughout the Great Lakes Basin and beyond. Zebra mussels spread naturally, or their spread is assisted in some way. Natural dispersal occurs when the larval stage is transported in currents or when adult mussels detach and move. Assisted dispersal occurs when people transport mussels or mussel larvae from one water system to another. Natural spread to the east into New York occurred by way of the Erie Canal. Natural spread to the south occurred by way of the Chicago Sanitary and Shipping Canal and into the Illinois River. Once in the Illinois, mussels easily spread downstream to the Mississippi River. Passive drifting carried mussels southward all the way to New Orleans and the Gulf of Mexico. In some cases, slow-moving barges undoubtedly served as taxis carrying attached adult mussels from place to place. Zebra mussels were carried north, also by boats or barges, to Minneapolis in the upper Mississippi River, to Pittsburgh on the Ohio, to Charleston on the Kanawha, to Nashville on the Cumberland, to Chattanooga on the Tennessee, and to eastern Oklahoma on the Arkansas. The zebra mussel life cycle is an important factor in its ability to spread. It includes a planktonic, free-swimming larval stage, as well as an attached adult stage. The larvae are dispersed by currents in rivers and lakes, or are transported from one water body to another. The planktonic stage lasts about two to four weeks. When the planktonic phase is complete, the larvae settle and attach to hard objects. This is called primary settlement. However, these small, newly settled larvae can detach from the bottom, be resuspended by the current and carried away, then reattach in a new location. This process is called secondary settlement and allows the larvae to choose the best site to remain and grow into adulthood. Adult mussels can detach themselves and move about using their foot. This gives them a limited ability to move around, but if they move onto a free-floating object, they can travel much greater distances. During the early phases of spread, zebra mussels rapidly colonized the Great Lakes and the major navigable rivers of the U.S. and Canada. Scientists are now recording a second wave of invasion as zebra mussels are appearing in many inland lakes. The effects of the zebra mussels on the Great Lakes and the other parts of North America where they spread can really be divided into two effects. Uh, effects on people which have been dramatic and which is what's caused them to reach such public attention and effects on the biological systems or the ecosystems of the uh, freshwater systems. This spread to inland lakes is most likely a result of recreational boating, although other situations can also result in unintentional zebra mussel introductions. For example, transferring water from one lake to another to control the water level, and discharging the water used to transport live fish for stocking can introduce mussels into uninfested waters. Adult mussels can attach directly to boat holes or other submerged parts of a boat. But these surfaces are often subjected to high current flow, making it rather difficult for a mussel to remain attached. Adults are most likely to be carried in masses of aquatic weeds and be picked up on the boat, its motor, or the trailer while removing the boat at a launching ramp. In addition, bilges, live wells, and bait buckets can contain large numbers of microscopic larvae. Dumping or exchanging water from these containers can introduce the zebra mussel larvae into other water bodies. The risk for long distance transportation is also very real. There have been three recent reports of zebra mussels on trailered boats entering California with some of the mussels still living. All of these boats were from the Midwest. Clearly, transporting recreational boats is another way for zebra mussels to spread. In North America, the zebra mussel has posed a serious threat to water treatment, power generating, and industrial facilities using large amounts of lake or river water. Since the zebra mussel is able to attach to virtually any hard substrate, these facilities with their submerged pipes and equipment provide a highly desirable home site for the mussels. Dealing with incrustations can be a tedious and expensive operation. In the case of municipal water supplies, consumers feel the effect in the form of foul tasting and foul smelling water in their homes. Taste and odor problems from zebra mussels are kind of twofold. One is 
the problems actually caused by the zebra mussels themselves. They release a pseudo feces. They're filter feeders. So everything they don't use passes right through them. So they can concentrate materials and therefore those materials would be more likely to cause taste and odor problems. Another problem occurs with the zebra mussels when they die and as they die their the flesh of their bodies decays and lets off a pretty foul odor. Probably the indirect way they cause taste and odor problems is that by filtering the water they actually clean up the water allowing the sunlight to penetrate deeper into the lake or river which allows different types of algae to grow and proliferate and some of those algae cause taste and odor problems. The impact on Nanticoke of having these small surface water lines fog would basically mean that the main units would be shut down. Much of this water is used to, to cool uh, oil and other systems that are essential for the operation of the large units. The first initial cost was to hire a consultant to do a feasibility impact study for us. That ran right around $20,000. That's probably been our most, the biggest cost we've had. Um, we have divers every year. Divers cost us approximately $3,000 a year. Um, the remote camera monitoring is probably another $1,000 a year. We had to physically clean one of our intake cribs in 1995. That cost $11,000. Any other monitoring we do at the different facilities in the plant are at times when these facilities are dewatered for maintenance purposes. From an ecological perspective, the impacts of zebra mussels are significant and particularly troublesome because there are no effective methods for controlling mussels in natural habitats. In large lakes, sunlight provides energy supporting the growth of microscopic algae or phytoplankton, which in turn are consumed by zooplankton. Zooplankton are microscopic animals, and they are a primary food source for smaller fish, which are food for larger fish. Following the introduction of zebra mussels, which consume phytoplankton, significant declines in zooplankton have been measured in some ecosystems. Food web relationships are much more complex than indicated here, and researchers who study these food webs are still not certain if there will be subsequent declines in larger fish species, such as walleye and yellow perch. The effect of zebra mussels on the food web is predicted to immediately affect those fish that also feed on uh, zooplankton and therefore are, are losing their food resource to zebra mussels. Um, so you'd expect that fish such as uh, young yellow perch, um, the chubs, the other planktivorous fish would start to decrease in population. Uh, in fact, that hasn't happened as rapidly as we'd expected. Larger fish species can switch to other forms of prey, and some species actually benefit from the invasion of zebra mussels. For example, zebra mussels can be viewed as diverting energy from the open water to the bottom, or benthos. This energy supports zebra mussels and those organisms living amongst them. Populations of small crustaceans, crayfish, snails, and small worms increase dramatically in areas invaded by zebra mussels. These organisms, in turn, provide a food source for larger species of fish. Filter feeding by zebra mussels can indirectly benefit aquatic plants and animals by increasing water clarity in shallow areas. This increased water clarity stimulates large aquatic plant or macrophyte growth. Dense weed beds provide habitat for many aquatic organisms and the fishes that feed on them. However, they can also become a nuisance for boaters and industrial or municipal water users when they proliferate in shallow water areas. North America has the world's richest variety of freshwater mussels, nearly 200 species. Many of these species are already endangered as a result of human activities, such as industrial pollution, sedimentation of streams from clearing land, and dam construction. Zebra mussels are a serious threat to native freshwater clams and mussels because they can attach directly to their shells. Heavy encrustations of zebra mussels are always fatal to the host, and in several infested lakes, native mussels have completely disappeared. We have more types of, of 
native mussels in North America than any other continent. So we have a pretty rich um, mussel fauna in North America. And a lot of those were already threatened before zebra mussels came in. And we were fearful that when zebra mussels got here, they were going to wipe a lot of native unionids out. And, and in fact, that may be the case over, over years and years. Uh, they may actually uh, push a lot of our native mussels either to the brink of this uh, extinction or maybe all the way into extinction. Some species are more, it seems, susceptible to zebra mussel impacts than other species of native mussels. So some, some of our native mussels didn't seem very hard hit, but some of the smaller species or the thin-shelled species especially, suffered significant mortality. And over the last couple of years, since 1993, we've been watching them somewhat, and we haven't seen a good recovery in our native mussels. The most visible danger to humans posed by zebra mussels is their sharp shells. Each summer, numerous lake and river bathers experience cuts and scrapes from zebra mussel shells. However, there is an invisible and much more serious potential threat to both humans and wildlife. Because zebra mussels filter large quantities of water, they are exposed to contaminants when present in the water or in the phytoplankton they consume. Contaminants tend to accumulate in bottom sediments. Zebra mussels often colonize on or near these bottom sediments. When zebra mussels feed, they may be exposed to contaminants in the water they filter and in the food they eat. Any organism that consumes zebra mussels in turn may accumulate these toxins. Diving ducks consume large numbers of zebra mussels, and biologists have already confirmed that ducks feeding on zebra mussels have higher contaminant loads than ducks feeding primarily on aquatic vegetation. Clearly, other organisms, including humans, that consume waterfowl or fish that have fed on zebra mussels will also be at risk to accumulate these same toxins. Research conducted since 1988 has shown that significant changes to infested aquatic ecosystems have already occurred. However, we still have a long way to go before we fully understand the zebra mussels' long-term impacts on these waters. In the meantime, the best solution to the problems caused by non-indigenous species such as the zebra mussel is prevention. By barring new introductions and limiting the further spread of species already present, we can give aquatic ecosystems a chance to continue to provide the environmental and economic benefits so important to us all.